All right, welcome back everybody. Now that we have, from our first video, we have just our main screen, if we hit play, we're gonna be able to go click on start and just go to uh, the next level, which happens to be question one. So uh, uh, let's all go to Q1 and it's an empty uh, screen pretty much. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, just add a text and you know this is not the fanciest way of doing this but you know based on what you're trying to build for and whatnot you would definitely change this but uh we could do a question here so we could just say uh this is where your very first question goes okay and uh you know you, you get access to do your alignment i'm just going to do the center from the top and the uh from left and right let's do this at least at 24. um and you know you, you got your question now i would definitely design this a little bit more but we uh you i'll let you do that and uh we'll kind of work on more of the functionality of itself all right so this text we're going to call this uh question text okay now we have that and what does all trivia games have buttons so we're going to make a button and i'm just going to kind of do this let's make another button because usually you get multiple choices and let's do two more And here we go. Okay. All right. And these lectures are more meant for you to do repetition and get used to this process. So uh, there are ways to optimize a lot of this stuff and um, get it all done within uh, one screen, one scene, and everything. However, um, this is very helpful for you to get more comfortable with Unity. What uh, especially since you want to progress and learn other pieces of this. So now that we have button one, two, three, it's not really exciting. Let's call this A1 for answer one. Uh, you could type out the word answer if you want, A2. I'm gonna do A3 and A4. Okay, cool. All right, now inside this, you'll have some text uh we could, could just call this uh yeah, you could put whatever text you want in there we could just leave it default if i hit play you're just going to get this and you're going to be able to click on these items okay so now that we have that set up um we now need to get some of this uh working to get to the next section so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to save this existing scene and I'm going to save scene as, and I'm just going to do Q2 because we'll definitely need um, a second question. Okay. And you got that here. So now we're going to click back to Q1 where we have all this. And we're going to start with our script. And what we need to do is we need to be able to um, start developing uh, a script that allows us to check what the correct answer is and once you uh, click on an answer then you go to the next question we'll also need to add things like a timer because i'm assuming you would want a timer on a trivia game and also something that kind of just tells us oh this is what your score is okay so we'll work on each piece as we go along but uh, the first thing we're going to do is let's kind of get a, a method to uh answer these questions okay and uh what so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a new script a javascript call it check answers all right so if i double click that now i'm in here now um as we kind of start figuring out okay so we have a script we need to be able to say hey when i click on this button any one of these four buttons i want to check to see if that's the right answer now 
we're going to do this in a very straightforward approach. There's many ways to do it, and this isn't possible. This is probably not one of the most optimized versions, but it's going to help us get a better understanding of what we can and cannot do in Unity. Okay, and so what we're going to do is uh, we guys define some uh, variables. Okay, and uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to drag um, and reference actual objects via script. There's a couple ways of doing it. One is to drag the object into the script or in the appropriate variable. Another one is to find, uh, actually look for it via script and pull it that way. So I'm going to show you how to do both and then we're just going to stick with one after that. So let's go ahead and make the couple variables. So as we are kind of going around with uh, what we're doing, we're just going to make sure we import Unity Engine.ui because we'll be using a lot of that. Um, and what we're going to do is, after that, make our variables. So I'm going to just call variable answer one. And I'm going to say it's a button because it's a button object that we're looking for. So this part is the, it could be any variable name. This needs to be associated to a type that is recognized in Unity. Okay, and uh, you, you'll get used to it, but you can always look at the scripting reference to see how it's called and all that. So we're going to call one that's called answer one. Let's do var answer two is a button. Var answer three is a button. Var answer four is a button. Okay, all right. So now that we have those four pieces, I'm going to hit save. Go in here and... Uh, I got my uh, script here, and before I attach it to anything, uh, if you click on it, notice up here you have these items. This is what your script is starting to look like. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is this is something that I believe uh, we've been doing this for a while now, but we're going to create a, a new game object, an empty game object, and we're just going to call it Game Manager. And what we tend to do is just use this object just to hold scripts that are vital from game to game or scene to scene. So I'm just going to throw in check answer here. That way then it's all centralized in game manager. And notice how you have all these. Now if I actually dragged A1 to any of these, notice how I could throw it in there. Once I throw it in there, hey, it's there. Now the cool thing about that is it allows us to uh, pick and choose which one is our actual answer one, our actual answer two, and so forth. And it gives us the ability to, um, you know, uh, have the script actually uh, uh, def uh, have the script ready for objects that you have to give it in order for it to actually work. Another way around is to automate everything. If you know you're for sure you're going to have four questions all the time, then you could do something like that. If you have certain questions that only have three, then, you know, it might cause some issues. So, you know, there's a couple of things that you want to kind of think about when you're doing that. But for now, we're going to do this. I'm going to show you how to do the next uh, pull it via code as well. That way, then you could kind of gauge how that second piece is done. OK, so let's go back to check answers. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new variable and I'm going to do uh, this one's for answer to because I'm going to do it via script to pull it. So I'm just going to go var and then I'm going to do let's call it a two object because we first need to find the object and then we pull the actual button uh, piece. Uh, so we're going to say game object. And then uh, I am going to grab um, the actual button, which is up here. So uh, we already have that defined. So in start, when we actually start this, we're going to go to uh, say a2 object equals, and we're going to use the game object dot find function. And we're going to look for a2. Okay. Once we find A2, which happens to be this, it's a game object. 
So we have the reference to the object now in A2 object. So what we just need to make sure is say, hey, okay, answer two equals, and then you could say A2 object dot get component, and uh, we're going to do button. Okay, so by doing this, we first need to find the object, then we got to find the actual component, which is in the object. So for example, if I click on two, a2 is this entire thing is a game object, but each one of these pieces, the rec transform, canvas render, image script, button script, they're all components of the object. So that's kind of like a two step process for uh, finding these pieces. Okay. So uh, let's see, make sure I hit save. I'm going to hit play. And if I go to my game manager, notice how my A2 button got filled. Now let me unpause it. See, it's gone. Now if I hit play, it automatically got filled. And so did the A2 object right here. Okay, so there, those are two ways of doing it. Now, just to satisfy uh, the one other piece, what we can do is do it all at once. And in order to do it all at once, we could do it this way. Answer three equals, uh, we could do game object dot find. A3 dot get component component button. Okay, so if we hit save, go here, hit play. I'll go back to the game manager. Now A3 got filled. Notice how that was gone. Now A3 is there. Now the uh, one of the things that I would just mention is. If you don't necessarily need to reference the object here, you could just do it all in one line. Okay? Because what that does is that ends up putting a reference to the object in your variables. And, you, you know, if you're going to use it for other things, that's great. If you're just using it just to get to the button piece, maybe you just do it this way. Uh, either way works. Or you could even just do it the um, other way where you're just literally dragging them in. Okay? Now, if uh, being that this is in the game manager piece, if you use any of these pieces, you must have them in every single uh, scene you use the game manager uh, object. So um, if you don't, you're going to get an error and then problems will arise. So if you have trivia questions that sometimes have three, sometimes that has 10, uh, you know, then you might want to try a different method, like maybe more of a manual approach, uh, but it's up to you. Okay, so now that we have that set, we could, uh, you know, we're getting closer, you know, even though uh, in my game manager, I click, nothing really happens, right? However, um, we're uh, now associating the buttons. What we also need to do is uh, kind of associate um, like a Boolean, a true or false variable that tells us if that answer is correct. So I'm going to do this in between each one. So I could say A1, correct, and uh, Boolean. And then I'm going to go to the next, VA1, oops, A2, correct. Uh, oops, it's lowercase b, um, bar A3, correct, Boolean. And var a for correct boolean okay if i hit save go back here click on game manager notice now i have these where i could do check boxes so it's, uh, if it's not checked it's false if it is it's true All right so now that we have that we're going to say hey when i click on an item i'm going to check to see if this is true if it's true then it's correct if it's not then it's incorrect okay so being that we just mentioned uh incorrect and correct we want to keep track of this stuff okay so i'm just gonna add uh, one variable for now uh called correct and it be an int right that way we keep track of what's going on okay all right so the next piece we're going to do is we're going to have to create a function this function is actually going to uh, see if it's the correct answer so let's go ahead and just call it function correct answer. And then in here, we're just going to uh, go through the four options that we have. 
and we're going to click through it. Now, one of the things that I would probably suggest in here is like you could just do a string of if statements if you wanted to, um, which is totally fine. You can also do a switch statement and do it that way. It's really just dependent on what you, whichever method you, you feel more comfortable with. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to um, get the name of the button that's pressed when it's being called from a different script. So what do I mean when we're in our button here and we do on click down here? That's going to go to check answers. So we just want to make sure which button gets pressed. It's, it's a very important to make sure we track that. So what we're going to do is we're going to just import unity engine dot an event system because that's what this is right here. It's an event system and uh, which is right, you know, it, it gets loaded when you have this. So you have your event system set up. Okay. And so in here, once you have your event system, we could create an actual uh, um, switch statement or if then else statements. So uh, just to show you uh, how it shows up, I'm just going to do debug.log. What this lets me do is if I say hello right here, this is going to print on the console. Okay. However, I need to go to A1. I need to add my on click like I did before. I'm going to look for game manager and I'm going to call check answer and for correct answer. Okay. So now if I hit play and I go to my console and click on button, it says hello. And if I keep on clicking, it's not going to keep on printing here. It's, it'll just say, oh, this has been done eight times. Okay. So that's kind of how you use like the console. It's just debug.log. Uh, what I was going to show you is uh, an event system to get the name. And so it's uh, event system. And I don't think that you would remember this right away. It just takes some time to get used to, but it's all in the uh, documentation dot name. So if I did that, if I click on play, now if I click here, it's going to say, oh, I clicked A1, which is the name of the object. If I click here, it doesn't work because I only have A1 done. <laughs> so let's go to A2. Let's just add this piece in here. Okay, we got game manager, check answers, and correct answer. Okay. Hit save. So now I go here, if I click I get A1, I get A2, and so forth. So um, that's kind of how you start tying these things in. Now it might be um, a little tedious to keep on doing the same thing over, over, and over again. So one way of uh, duplicating this process in a faster uh, way is to create a prefab. And that's one place, one folder I forgot to make. So we're just going to call it prefab. And what it is, is if we um, create and you see we're under scene prefab, it's going to be this empty box. So I'm just going to call this uh, answer for right now. And what you have to do is you can take any game object you have into here and it'll, it'll fill it in uh, that object. So for example, let's take a one. I'm going to drag that in here and notice how it got filled. So now when I look at answer here, it's going to have all the properties of a one. Okay. Why is that something that makes, you know, that is, uh, you know, interesting. It's just, you know, kind of fills in some of the stuff. All right. Now, uh, is it necessary for this? Probably not, but I just wanted to let you know that that is an option. Uh, when you're doing similar things like let's say you're doing a platformer and you want very similar platforms like you would make a prefab enemies would be a prefab because you know you're not going to recreate the enemy every time so those kind of things help with that piece okay and then when you're done with it you could just uh, throw it up here and it's going to give you another option and then it'd be like the fifth question right i'm not going to use this question but uh, it, it has all the pieces in here. 
and then you have to you still have to associate certain pieces but for the most part it would be pretty plug and play based on some of the scripts that you're doing okay so i'm just going to delete this for here but that's my quick piece on prefabs it's very helpful uh, in unity so just make sure you utilize that all right so heading back to this we have two questions set we have our script in check answers okay and what we're going to do is I'm just going to comment this out because I just wanted to show you when you click on that, it gives us our name. So uh, if you're not familiar with the switch statement, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward, but uh, that's what I'm going to do for this one. So I'm going to do event system dot current dot current selected game object dot name. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to open, close. And then inside of here, I'm just going to do case. And what is it? A1. And then I'm going to, um, let's just right here. Let's just first work on every case statement. So case uh, A2 break and uh, break just takes you to the bottom so you stop going through the list after you check it um, come on there we go case a4 and break okay all right so we have four so let's just stick with that for right now and uh, Inside of these case statements, we just want to say, hey, case, if it's A1, we just want to check if A1 correct is true, right? So now we're going to do a, a, an if statement right here. We're just going to say if A1 is correct, okay? And you could do the brackets if you feel comfortable with seeing the brackets. You don't have to, but uh, since there's only just one line we're executing, but we're just going to do that correct equals uh, plus plus, which is correct equals correct plus one, right? So we're going to just do this for the rest. All right. Correct plus plus. Uh -huh. Let's see. 23 correct. Plus plus. If correct. Correct. Plus plus. Okay. All right. So now we got that. So it's just going to add one to correct, and you're good to go. Now. The one thing that uh, this might not necessarily do uh, for us is, okay, we have correct here. So uh, let me first go back. I'm going to say the first answer is correct, okay? So if I click on this button, nothing happens. If I click on this, notice how correct added one, and it keeps on adding, okay? We, we just want you to select it one time, and then that's it, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we got our uh, question right. We're going to go to the next piece. Now, in our previous uh, video, we built this next question uh, piece right here. And it was just more to, you know, start everything off. But we're just going to combine this into check answers and just use the one script, okay? So I'm going to just make sure I add this. And then I'm going to just go here. I'm going to grab this just to save a little bit of keystrokes. Okay. And then after the switch statement is done, you're, you're going to go through it. It's going to be right or not. Okay. And you're just going to go to the next question, which is Q2. Okay. So now when you do that, you kind of have this going. So now when you hit play, if I actually click the first one, I'm going to go to the next one. 
Now I get the error because I didn't load uh, Q3 into my build settings. So, you know, you gotta just make sure anytime you add a new scene, you go to that, oh, actually Q2, not three. So that was another problem. I called the wrong number, I believe. So let's just fix that. Oh no, it is Q2, okay, cool. So now once I do that, if I hit play and click on the first one, it's gonna take me to the next one, okay? And the way I know is up here that by the name, um, I would uh, definitely uh, go in and change the next piece. But for right now, that's what that's set to. So what I'm gonna have you guys do real quick is just add, you know, make it an actual question and then uh, I'll fix all the buttons so it actually goes to this. And let's see, I got this last one to do. Then game manager, we got this, check answer, go to correct answer. Okay, I'm gonna hit save. So now every, all of those work, okay? And I'm gonna go to my scenes. Let's go to Q2. And now that I'm in Q2, what I'm gonna do is notice how nothing's done. Uh, your second question. Second question. Okay, hit save. All right, so now that you have that set up, all right, so I saved it. I'm gonna go back to one. Actually, let's just go back to title. If I hit play, go to start, I'm gonna pick the first one, and notice how it's a second question, okay? Um, it, you know, you can make a million of these if you wanted to, and uh, I, I wanted you guys to go through the scenes and make new questions and over and over again to kind of help you get used to how the flow of uh, a Unity project is. In the next video, what we'll do is we're going to add a timer and uh, something that tells you uh, how many you have correct. And after that, you should be able to pretty much do, uh, you know, get around in Unity and understand some of the basics and uh, be ready for our game jam on the weekend.